Hey everyone, this is Hannah with Rocket Miner giving another news update. Today I want to give a quick update on COVID numbers, where we're at with that, and um, then go over some things about how we can support um, some of the organizations in our community. Obviously a lot have been struggling with the pandemic, so um, some updates on where they're at, some support that they've been given, and ways that we can keep supporting our community um, going into the future. With COVID today, um, thankfully in Wyoming, the recoveries outpaced the new cases today. So that led to a pretty significant drop in our active case number. Um, our active cases had gone back up over 2,000 the last couple of days, but today they're back under it. Um, today we have 1,789 active cases and that is a drop of 489 cases from where we were yesterday. So that did put us back below 2,000 active cases again, and um, that's good to see. Obviously that number's been going up and down a lot lately, but it was good to see it drop pretty significantly again today. Um, unfortunately, the death total did rise again today. Um, there were 28 new COVID-related deaths in Wyoming that were confirmed by the Wyoming Department of Health today. So adding those into the total um, leaves us with 550 total deaths for Wyoming. Um, two of those confirmed deaths from today were Sweetwater County residents that had been hospitalized. Um, I also wanted to explain that today public health um, made a statement and gave a note about vaccination group 1B, where they're at right now with that, um, wanting to clarify a little bit about who's in that group and why. Um, Public Health said that they are aware that federal level guidelines for phase 1B do include people aged 65 and up. Um, currently, the vaccination guidelines for Wyoming and where we're at in Sweetwater County um, group 1B does not include people aged 65 to 69. They are not a part of that group, even though they're part of the federal guidelines and recommendations for this group. Um, Public Health explained that they are still waiting on guidance from the Wyoming Department of Health before they can change the current vaccination phases. But phase 1B is currently in review at the state level, and they are hoping that there will be an update on that soon. And so the way that this works um, with the vaccinations and the different groups and schedules, um, there are those federal level guidelines and recommendations from groups like the CDC, but it comes down to the individual states and the state's Department of Health um, that make the specific guidelines to take the federal guidelines and then apply them more specifically to that state. So all of the guidelines are coming from the Wyoming Department of Health for our county and the rest of Wyoming specifically. So that is why um, Public Health wanted to clarify that and that they're still working with the Department of Health. Um, they are aware of kind of the age range difference in some of the recommendations for the current phase, but they're working on it. They'll expand as much as they can when they can, um, but they wanted to clarify that that's why right now um, that age group is not currently included in phase 1b. So throughout all of the pandemic obviously the economy has been struggling a lot of organizations and businesses have been struggling but it's been especially hard on nonprofit organizations and charities and groups that rely on donations and fundraisers and things like that to just be able to keep going and keep offering their services. And obviously Sweetwater County is no exception to that. We have a lot of incredible nonprofits and organizations in our county and in our community. And they have been struggling definitely over the past year. Um, many that are groups that provide services to people like the food bank or the YWCA have continued operating, continued offering their services and even seen an increase in um, having to serve people and in the demand for their services because of the pandemic and things that it connects to and relates to and the effect it has on people has created an even greater need for some of those services that these organizations provide. But 
then they're also operating with needing to do more and having less resources to do it with. And then other organizations and groups in our community have struggled with being able to keep up with their normal pace of what they're able to do because they really rely on fundraising events and a lot of those fundraising events have had to be cancelled because of the pandemic, because of the safety concerns involved. There's just not been a good way to go forward with so many of those. And without them happening, they don't raise the amount of money they usually do. They struggle to keep going um, with their normal purposes. So obviously we've been seeing that in our community. The good news is that there is some relief and some support coming for a lot of those organizations. Uh, Sweetwater County has been allocated almost, um, wow, almost a million dollars in CARES Act funding, um, specifically $932,414 in the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security funds, which is the CARES Act funding, um, coming from the state to go towards the Community Charitable Relief Program. This program is designed to provide grant funding to nonprofit organizations that have provided public assistance or have seen a decline in donations during the COVID-19 pandemic. And here in Sweetwater County, it's um, up to the county commissioners to approve and um, give out those funds. And they had a special meeting on Friday to get started in that process. So the County Commission has already approved funding for 14 local nonprofits, and there are some funds that are left over um, to go to more groups. Um, so there is a story that's up right now on rockandmire.com and will be in the newspaper that has specific details on who those 14 groups were. Um, it includes some that I mentioned, like the Food Bank, the YWCA, um, also groups like Muley Fanatics. So different groups um, that are in our community that came to the County Commission and they presented why they have lost funding over the past year, whether it was not being able to hold their fundraisers or just the extra work that they've had to do. They explained their need and how much they were asking for, and then the commission approved those. So the story has the specifics on the groups, on how much money they were given, and on um, kind of their reasons for why they needed it specifically. So you can check that out for the details, but as I said, that was approved for 14 groups already, and there were some funds still left over, so they're gonna have another round of getting the rest of those funds out to other organizations in our community that need them to just help support them um, going forward. And then another important part of our community that has definitely been struggling because of the pandemic is the arts and supporting local arts. Obviously with things like theaters having to shut down, not being able to do things like plays or concerts in person, and then having restrictions on either other forms of art. Um, it's been hard, definitely, over the past year. And going forward into this new year, um, a lot of people in our community are really encouraging everyone to come together to support our local arts and artists and um, just keep that vibrant part of our community that is so important for so many people. So as part of that, the Rock Springs Main Street Urban Renewal Agency, the Community Fine Arts Center, and the newly formed Sweetwater Arts Partnership have issued a challenge to the community to support local art this year, and that's through the Pledge to Attend um, challenge. So this is the Rock Springs Arts Pledge to Attend. I have the paper here with the pledge on it that shows what it looks like. Um, Deborah Soule is the director of the Community Fine Arts Center, and she has been presenting this pledge to different um, county organizations and groups and local government. And um, one of the groups was she presented at the county commission meeting yesterday to explain the pledge to get other people in the community behind supporting it. 
So this pledge basically is just a pledge that you will attend at least one local art event every month through 2021. So this, this is what the pledge looks like. So it just says pledge to attend, it explains it at the top, and it just has a list of all of the months, and it has a space where you can write what the art event you attend is next to that month, and then you can just check it off, go all the way down January to December. And then the back also has a calendar of events to give some suggestions. Obviously this isn't everything that will happen this year, but this is some of the stuff we know is planned to happen um, that includes things like um, theater events at the college and the actor's mission or the concerts that happen downtown. Um, lots of different things, the art strolls downtown. So it has some of those listed out just as a jumping point to get you started on things that you can do throughout the year but obviously there will be lots more and there will be lots of updates about different events going on. So this could be any art event. It could be a concert or a play or a workshop or a gallery event. So, and one a month should not be difficult. Really, you should be able to go to a lot more than one a month. But this is a pledge to at least go to one and support that art in our community through the year. There will also be prizes for completing this pledge and a special gift for those who complete the pledge for the entire year, all 12 months. So definitely want to encourage everyone to be a part of that and just keep finding ways to support our local community. So thank you all for listening. Keep checking with us for more news and updates and I hope everyone has a good night.